This has to be one of the strangest characters that's in Super Smash Bros. I mean, I know there's a lot of wacky, crazy characters, but this one's weird because usually in Super Smash Bros. there are characters that you play as, or maybe like, bosses, but this one's weird because it's just a normal enemy, and you wouldn't think it would have really any attacks besides maybe shooting out a fireball like it does in Mario, but they really gave it a lot of strange attacks, and it's actually a pretty good character to play as. Now this was the first DLC character they released. If you got the game early on, maybe in the first couple months or something like that, you got this character for free. Otherwise now I'm not sure how much DLC characters cost, but they've come out with a lot of characters by now for the DLCs, maybe 10 or something like that, but I know they have a lot more coming also. I'm hoping for Toad or Captain Toad. I've always wanted to see him in Super Smash Bros. So let's jump into the actual clay creation here. As you saw there, I used my X-Acto knife and made a really nice dirt texture for the pot. But now for some more texturing, we can use our toothbrush. I've used this a few times in the past, and it gives a really nice, realistic look to things like this. Using our dentist pick on some flattened down clay, we can start drawing out the leaves. And the nice part about using stuff that's flattened down like this is, after we cut this out, we can just place that on top of another sheet of clay, and we can use it as a stencil. And that way we can get the leaves exactly the same as each other. So now let's peel those apart and use our dentist pick again to start making all of the line details in the leaf. I think this makes it look a lot more realistic, like a real leaf. So now, on the outside of that, we need some darker green clay, and basically we just have to follow the shape of the leaf, but a little bit wider from the sides of it. And it doesn't have to be perfect, anything pretty close works. So now, this is the same color green that we used on the outer part of the leaves. This will be for the main piranha plant body. I wanted to try something new coating the wire by just splitting it open and filling it with the wire. I thought hopefully maybe this would make things a bit easier. And I think that it actually did. It was a lot easier than trying to roll the clay around the wire. Although it is very hard to get the wire in the center of the clay, so it's kind of just in there, it's not really in the middle. But it's covered up, so I think it works pretty good. We'll need a little bit of wire at the end here. This will be where we're gonna stick the head onto. Just to make sure that it stays nice inside of the pot, we'll use some of this Fimo liquid clay. If you don't already know, this stuff dries just like glue, except it dries when it's in the oven and it bonds the clay together as hard as a rock. So it's very useful for things like that. Now let's attach those leaves onto there. Let's start working on the head of the piranha plant. I think besides a Goomba, this is probably one of the most iconic enemies that are in any type of Mario game, so I think it's just so weird but so cool that it's in Super Smash Bros. There's no really other characters in there that compare to this in terms of it being just a random enemy from a game. When I was making this part, I just kept thinking how much it looks exactly like Pac-Man, but red. Kinda weird, you wouldn't think that this would be a piranha plant. It really looks a lot more like it when we start adding the spots onto it. Here we have the big ton. And once we get that in there, we can start on creating the teeth. Now I haven't done this too many times before with the individual teeth, just a couple times in the past but it's basically the same concept. And like always, I created way more teeth than I'm gonna need because you might mess up or you might need ones different shapes. Now the teeth go in a sort of pattern. So the teeth that we have on the top, the ones on the bottom, usually in teeth would be going in the gaps so that they, you know, would be able to close. So here we have our scary mouth. Now let's add this white strip around it. These are maybe like lips? I'm not really sure. 
And now I think at this point it's starting to really look like the piranha plant. I think it just really needed those lips to start looking like it. And these are nice too because they hide all of the tool marks and stuff we had on the teeth. Now let's start creating our spots here. These are going to go sort of randomly just all over the piranha plant. I didn't really have a pattern of how I wanted to do this. Some of them are big, some of them are little. And I think this looks really nice, so let's get this all ready to go into the oven. And our piranha plant is ready to get baked. After baking, let's take a little bit of super glue to attach the head on there. And here it is guys, the piranha plant. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video or found it helpful. If you did, don't forget to leave a like and maybe even consider subscribing and I will see you all in the next one.